name is Samson Moss and I'm from Oak to Oaks, Alberta and I'm a hat maker. There's not very many guys making hats in Canada, I want a few. I enjoy the creativity, I enjoy the alone time, I can just do my day to day work by myself and not have to travel around too far. As you can see we're right in my dining room which is pretty handy. I hope to become Canada's top hat maker. No pun intended. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's show you guys some stuff. So we're gonna start from the beginning. Samson's gonna show us how you fit someone's head for a hat, where he starts, and we'll work our way through the different stages. This is what I call my conformator. It's actually 3D printed. Just place it on your head. You gotta kind of wiggle it down, but you'll feel it pop on. And you're gonna place it exactly where you'll feel your sweatband would sit. Kind of mind your brow bone, where your ears would sit, the back of your head, where you feel your sweatband would comfortably stay on your head. And that was the center of your head right there. You take a tracing. And then we're going to take a measurement and I'm going to build you your own block. And that is what I use to form the hat around after it's ready to go. This hat here is ready to be shaped up. And um, as you can see, it's got the exact same shape of her head. First step into making a hat is blocking it. We've got the hat wet. It's not stained. Uh, I like to wet block hats. Uh, some guys like to dry block, which means just using steam, but I like to soak them a little bit, get them able to stretch over that block a little bit more. But I, and then after I do soak it, I also like to steam it. Beaver hair follicles are a lot finer than rabbit. Rabbits are a lot more coarse and thicker hair follicles. So when they interweave in making that felt, they don't situate together perfectly, allowing a lot more moisture and dust to get in. But the beaver hair follicles are finer, allowing them to interweave a lot tighter, creating a lot more of that weatherproofing aspect, waterproofing. Get pretty close there. I'm gonna feel all the way around. I'll make sure that this string is in the same position all the way around because that's what really helps create the base of our crown. Once we have a hat blocked, I'm gonna take the string off. This one's all dry. And pop it off. And as you can see, this one's a fairly small head, but thankfully we have flattened presses for each size block. We're gonna pop it off the block. And then I like to mark which uh, is the back and which is the front. The next step I like to do is pounce the crown, which means sanding it. And I use a couple different grits to get a very fine finish. You can see this crown is already uh, pounced. I'm just in the middle of doing the brim here. So we're gonna finish up this one and then we're gonna light that sucker on fire. With the way the grain lays, is I like to go counterclockwise, yeah, even if you're cleaning a hat, on top, counterclockwise and clockwise on the bottom. So next I'm going to go over with a bit of a finer grit and then I'm going to actually go over it again by hand and get a lot of the deeper spots, um, maybe spots that this palm sander didn't quite touch perfectly and uh, perfect them.
All right, so uh, next step with this is to light it on fire. This helps create a lot of sealing in the hat. It singes a lot of those loose hairs. It helps stiffen the felt. And uh, helps even out a lot of the color. As you can see, it was a bit spotty from some of the pouncing, but this fixes a lot of that. Okay, and you can see a lot of that spotting is gone. Okay, um, this here is a rounding jack that my granddad made for me. I put some of the holes in it for some different uh, hat size, hat brim sizes. And this guy here, he wants his brim pretty wide. So what I'm gonna do first off is trim just the outer edge. This hat, he wants a four and a half inch brim. As you can see there, we're exactly at four and a half inches. So this thing works pretty slick. Thanks, granddad. This hat here is ready for flanging. What I like to do is use a steam iron that's nice and hot. Lots of steam, lots of uh, heat in there. So the steam helps really set that down real nice. Yeah, you can feel a little bit of a ridge here. If I pop it up, you can feel this one's not completely flat. You can see it's coming up off of the, the wood here yet. It's uh, still needing a little more attention. Next, we're gonna stamp Mike's name into his sweatband. I'm gonna create a bit of a line. One positive factor that I like to really highlight is the fact that as you wear it more, it uh, gets greasy, sweaty, and it starts to grip your head. And that allows it to stay on in the wind. And so uh, what I, do you run any machines? No, that's handcrafted. So, as you can see here, the light I sold them in by hand. Okay, uh, the next step for this one here is we are going to sew the hat band on. Uh, traditionally, men's hats, the bow would go on the left, and the women's hats, the bow would go on the right. So after sewing it in, uh, you can see this hat band is ready to go. Uh, we've cleaned it up, we've tightened it, snugged it to the hat itself. And uh, the next thing for this hat will be to shape it. So let's get to shaping a hat. Blaney, she wants a kind of a cross between a Canadian and a brick crown and uh, what's called a rodeo brim. So it's pretty square in front tipped up sides, not too narrow like a George brim, but a little bit wider in front. So yeah, let's uh, show you guys how I shape a hat. So we like to get um, more steam rather than moisture. You can see uh, I've got uh, a old wild rag tape on the, here, on the tip of my steamer.
In each hat, I like to I like to shape each hat at least three or four times. Um, make adjustments as I need to, tweak it, because once it dries, it starts to work a little bit, right? So you just you fix a little bit more at a time. Sit that in there real nice. See, starting to take shape. So yeah, here we go. This hat has uh, got the liner. We've got a nice sweatband in there. Our hat band's looking really nice, shaped up. All right guys, well, thank you for tuning in. I'm glad to have you along here, show you some of the process that goes into making custom hats. I'm Samson Moss, Prairie Wind Hat Works. Uh, if you like this video and you want to see more, uh, tune in to more of Joel's uh, training on Bar Jail Horse Training. And he's got a whole bunch of different videos on very interesting topics. And if you want to check out my hats, we'll have a link in the description as well. So until next time, take care.